with the bikes on the bus. The idea was to return to the routes, navigation only with a compass and maps. No pre-planning, no digital navigation. We made only one rule, follow the compass needle direction south until we hit the ocean. It worked pretty well for the first few kilometers. Suddenly the road turned off, but a dirt track led exactly south. We followed the compass and headed into the dense forest. Huh? Looks like we are lost for the first time after five kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can head that way and just go around. Okay, there is a train. I see it, Julian. Yeah. Over there, yeah, for sure. We have to go through there. We have to go down. Yep. And then up. Yeah. Ride that, man. With all this bag? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's fun. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ankle. Is that it? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm good. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. No yeah, you got it. Be careful. Yeah. It's super heavy. Okay. Yeah. Who weighs a fucking ton? Okay guys, I can see the road over there. Yeah, Let's go. Can we get onto the road though once we get over there? So we are here now. We want to go south so we can actually follow the 1200 for a bit. Yeah. And so we're here and then it ends. Let me go this way. All right. Our plan was to follow the cycling lane 1200 for the next 10, 15 kilometers. And have easy going, but uh, somehow we lost it after three kilometers. Okay guys, I think we are wrong. We have turned around. There's no way getting over here. So five kilometer back and then hopefully there's a bridge. The sun woke us up and we were already in Austria. We came closer and closer to the mountains and it became more and more mountainous. In the evening, we pitched our tents near a small mountain river. The journey continued, surrounded by massive mountains. Today, the highest pass with 1,800 meters was on the agenda. Fresh, icy mountain water. Just what we need. We're now nearly at the top of the mountain. It's so steep. Doesn't really matter if you push your bike or if you walk. Where it goes up, it also goes down again. 
after we had put on everything we had with us, a 10-kilometer descent followed. We left the main road uh, because it was not heating south anymore. Now we are in the woods again, training. Guys are a bit pissed because they wanted to go straight. And I said, now nah, let's try this. Hopefully we can get out of this here. Otherwise, I'm pretty much fucked. Not sure if we're on the right way. It's super muddy here, raining. Like hell. Okay, I think these guys are killing me now. There's a dead end road after five kilometers from this track. Let's see if this guides us somewhere. <laughs> Thanks, man. Got it. It's more walking trail. Finally, there was a gate to a field. Since there seemed to be no other way, we decided to climb over it. When we arrived at the field, it looked as if there were no further exit and the field was no longer being managed. Luckily, we found another gate in the end. In the evening, we found an abandoned shed in a meadow, which was perfect for setting up our camp for the night. We left Austria behind and crossed a pass into Slovenia. After a fast descent, we left the mountains behind us and went through Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. It was only 100 kilometers to the beach, and Robert immediately changed into his beach outfit. Our compass needle pointed directly south. Unfortunately, an angry dog disagreed, and we had to take another diversion. Is this the way to the beach? Maybe not. We ended up in Rijeka and were able to relax on the beach for a few hours before boarding the bus back to Berlin. Not planning the route beforehand and just riding with a compass made the trip something unique. A new adventure was waiting behind every turn. Just when we thought we were on the right track, it didn't go any further. But it was exactly the unknown that made the trip special.